song from Hamilton. We finally, halfway through our year, we've got to, we've gotten, we've gotten to Hamilton. I'm just curious, show of hands, how many of you have listened to Hamilton or seen Hamilton or are familiar enough with the musical? A few hands and then a few head shakes. You don't need to be. Um, I'm going to give you the context of what we're listening to. Um, it really is an extraordinary piece of entertainment of art. Um, the the moment that we're we're listening to and watching is um, about halfway through Act Two. So George Washington has decided he's not running for re-election, and um, Alexander Hamilton is his right hand man. And you know the scene opens where where Hamilton says, "President, you wanted to see me," and and they have this conversation where Washington breaks the news. He says, "I'm not running for president." And um, what we end up hearing is, is Washington being this incredibly gracious, dignified leader uh, where he says, I'm gonna teach them how to say goodbye. I'm gonna teach this country, which has invented uh, democracy, essentially. Um, I'm gonna teach them how to, how to have a transition of leadership because otherwise, they will cling to me and, and the, the nation won't move on. Um, it's, uh, it's beautiful. We're gonna watch it together. Um, and uh, it's almost wistful right now. I mean, re really this is not a class for politics and I respect everyone for their own political views, um, but you have to be living under a rock to know that this transition of power has been anything but smooth or dignified. And, uh, and we're going to see just a beautiful model and the way that it's depicted in this musical of a true leader, of someone who says, okay, my time is up and I'm passing the, the baton to someone else. So we'll see that with, with George Washington, the founding leader, the founding president. And then of course, the, the parallel is to Moses. Moses, you know, who could follow in Moses' footsteps? It would be impossible to imagine. Um, but Moses himself says, I need to appoint a successor to make sure that this nation is left in good hands when I'm gone. So it's about succession and it's about transition and it's about dignity and humility in leadership. So with all that said, share my screen. And this is very exclusive because you need to have a Disney Plus membership to actually see the Hamilton, the Broadway, uh, filming of Hamilton. So um, with gratitude to my Disney Plus membership, we're all going to see it. You can't record this. I mean, obviously we won't be putting this out anywhere. It's, it's, legal, it's, it's legal property of Disney Plus, but I'm going to show you the, 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 what you'll see. Oh, this is important also. What you'll see in the staging is um, as George Washington is singing, you know, one last time, I want to write my last speech and Hamilton, of course, is his right hand, his, his speech writer. So he's telling Hamilton, write my last speech. I want to teach them how to say goodbye. I want to give a farewell speech. Um, and, and towards the end of the song, um, they actually have an excerpt from George Washington's farewell speech. And you see Alexander Hamilton starts to say it. And he's writing it for Washington. He's the speech writer. And then there's a transition where Washington himself comes forward and he's giving the speech. And I just find it beautiful. Um, and one last uh, note is keep an ear out for the biblical reference. There's a biblical reference in this um, clip. So I'm gonna just make sure all of this is sharing correctly. And off we go. Wait, can you see it? It's blank for me. Why is this not, it's not sharing. I was afraid this might happen. Do you think Disney Plus is too smart for us? It won't let me screen share? If not, I have another staging of this I can show you. Um, can anyone just unmute and tell me, do you see a blank it's screen sharing. like I see? What happens when you play? Mr. President, you ask to see me. I know you yeah, no, you only hear that, right? You don't see that. No. No. Okay, okay. All right, thank you, Disney Plus. Thanks anyway. They've put something on. Um, they've put something on YouTube that is public, so I'm closing my Disney Plus. This you see, right? It says Hamilton and a big star. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to make this the full screen, 
and we'll hear it this version instead. Um, this, the, the problem with this version is that uh, clearly they, they created it. It's courtesy of Disney Plus that made it public on YouTube, but they have put the lyrics right on the screen. So you have the lyrics in front of the actors. And it, I don't know. I really wanted to see the pure version of the scene, but we're not going to get to see that. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know that that would actually happen with Disney Plus, but here we are. Okay, so you'll still see the staging, but you'll see the lyrics right in front. Um, don't, don't lose the staging, especially when you get to that point of the speech at the end, where Hamilton starts in the front, and then um, he moves back as, as Washington himself is giving the speech. Okay, and I'm going to ask everyone to just stay on mute so we can all hear, and this is called One Last Time. Something that was once done oh, and only an ad. by men <laughs> could be the key to taking years off your appearance. There we go. Skip Believe the it or ad. Okay. Mr. President, did you ask to see me? I know you're busy. What do you need, sir? Sir? I want to give you a word of warning. Sir, I don't know what you heard, but whatever it is, Jefferson started it. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson resigned this morning. You're kidding. I need a favor. Whatever you say, sir, Jefferson will pay for his behavior. Shh. Talk less. I'll use the press. I'll write under a pseudonym. You'll see what I can do to him. I need you to draft an address. Yes, he resigned. You can finally speak your mind. No, he's stepping down so he can run for president. Ha. Good luck defeating you, sir. I'm stepping down, I'm not running for president. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> One last time. Relax, have a drink with me. One last time. Let's take a break tonight and then we'll teach you how to say goodbye. To say goodbye, you and I. to talk about neutrality. Sir, with Britain and France on the verge of war, is this the best I time? I want to warn against partisan fighting. Pick up a pen, start writing. I want to talk about what I have learned, the hard-won wisdom I have earned. As far as the people are concerned, you have to serve. You could continue to serve. No, one last time. The people will hear from me. One last time. If we get this right, we're gonna teach them how to say goodbye. You and I. Mr. President, they will say you're weak. No, they will see we're strong. This issue is so unique. So I'll use it to move them along. Why do you have to say goodbye? If I say goodbye, the nation learns to move on. Me when I'm gone. Like the scripture says, everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. They'll be safe in the nation we've made. I want to sit under my own vine and fig tree moment alone in the shade at home in this nation we've made one last time one last time though in reviewing the incidents of my administration I am unconscious of intentional error I am nevertheless too sensible of my defects not to think it probable that I may have committed many errors. I shall also carry with me the hope that my country will view them with indulgence and that after 45 years of my life dedicated to its service with an upright zeal, the faults of incompetent abilities will be consigned to oblivion as I myself must soon be to the mansions of the rest. I anticipate with pleasing expectation that retreat in which I promised myself to realize the sweet enjoyment of partaking in the midst of my fellow citizens, the benign issuance of good laws under a free government, the 
a favorite object of my heart. And the happy rewards I trust of our mutual gains. Favors and angels. One last time. George Washington's will be George Washington's will Sorry for the YouTube ads there. Wow, wow, wow. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So I wanna show you the lyrics now. Um, I'm gonna open it up. Here we go. And share the screen. So I want to skim down, you know, there's this beginning, you, you, you're not gonna, you know, uh, Jefferson will never defeat you. What, I'm stepping down, I'm not running for president, what? And um, I, I want to just look at the, the way that Washington talks about what it means to leave office when being um, in, from, a, from a place of strength. Right, I wanna talk about the hard-won wisdom I have earned, et cetera, et cetera. Here, this part, we're on the left-hand side. Mr. President, they will say you're weak. No, they will see we're strong. Your position is so unique. No, I'll use it to move them along. So it's a moment of understanding that a leader's job is not only to lead, but then to, to, to focus on the enterprise itself. This is a servant leader uh, in service to something greater than themselves. And of course, it's going to be hard for them to say goodbye. And Hamilton's voice brings that, right? Why do you have to say goodbye? And Washington says, if I say goodbye, the nation learns to move on. It outlives me when I'm gone. And he knows I won't be around forever, but this, this is much more important than my own individual lifetime. Um, there's another point in the musical, by the way, for those who haven't seen, that um, King George comes soon after this and says, <laughs> they say, you know, Washington is is uh, giving up his power. I didn't know that was a thing a person could do. Because remember in monarchies, um, you, you held your power until your death and then, and then maybe people afterwards could worry about who, who would take all over or maybe you, you said it would be your son or whatever. Um, but Washington is, is a democratic leader and is modeling that um, no one person's leadership is absolute. Right, there's no divine right of kings, for example, and um, and he's also a person like everyone else. So this is the on the top right here. I scrolled up. Um, I don't know if you caught this biblical reference. Everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. So that's um, a reference to in the in the book of of Melachim, in the book of Kings, and as well in the book of Micah, and and also in the book of uh, Zechariah. But it it's a a reference to a time of peace and a time of ease that every person can be tachat gafno v'tachat te'enato. Um, everyone can sit under their own vine and fig tree and feeling a sense of security. And he says, I want to sit under my own vine and fig tree. And actually, um, apparently this was a, a phrase that Washington loved very much and used, um, historians say you, that he used them up to 50 times during his presidency. Um, and that his vine and fig tree was probably a reference to um, his beloved Mount Vernon. I actually, I'll put this, I'll stop for a second. I'll switch for a second. I'm gonna put this link 
in the chat so you can see it and read it on your own. But um, this is uh, from the Mount Vernon website talking about the way that George Washington loved the, um, the vine and fig tree of Mount Vernon. Oh, I guess I'll put it in the chat in a second. But uh, it's amazing that he uses this biblical verse to express uh, an idyllic version, a uh, vision of peace. And look at this paragraph. The phrase is also notably found in a well-known letter that Washington wrote to the Hebrew congregation in Newport, Rhode Island, which is, if you, if you don't know, is the first synagogue in the United States. And there's a letter in which Washington says, may the children of the stock of Abraham who dwell in this land continue to merit and enjoy the goodwill of other inhabitants while everyone shall sit in safety under his own vine and fig tree and no one shall make them afraid. So uh, I'm gonna, uh, sorry, I have too many things going on on my screen to put this in the chat. I'm gonna put this in the chat now. And now I'm also watching the chat for any comments you have as we go. Yes, it's like retiring, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But no, no uh, country's ruler before had ever retired. Um, it was the, the, the monarchy until death. Um, and then I just find it so beautiful the way that Lin-Manuel Miranda wove the uh, original Washington farewell address right into this song. And it starts with Hamilton who writes it and Washington then who, who sort of belts it like a, like a gospel song after 45 years of dedication to the country. Um, he wants to be in the midst of his fellow citizens. So he's emphasizing, I'm just one of you now. When a president finishes his term, he becomes a fellow citizen, which again was a radical idea. So uh, we're gonna look to Moses now. And I'm switching gears to, of course, the founding father, right? The founding leader of uh, the enterprise of the Israelite nation. And here we go. Just gonna, for myself, make sure I keep looking on the chat. I can't do two things at once. I have to tell you what I'm doing while I'm doing it. <laughs> okay. Um, Moses. So. Moses too has a has a, an inkling that it's important to ensure continuity of leadership. And uh, this is there are a couple of texts we're going to look at, but this is from toward the end of the book of Bar, the book of Numbers. And it's Moses himself who says to God, um, please let's appoint a successor. So I, I, as always, I read in the Hebrew and jump into English. And so you can follow along visually in whatever you're comfortable with. Um, but those who want to look at the Hebrew, I'll, I'll read that Hebrew. So verse Tedvav 15, Vayidaber Moshe El Hashem Limor. Moses speaks to God, which is, it's, it's the exact opposite of what we usually hear. That verse would usually go, and God spoke to Moses, Lamor, saying, so, it draws the reader's attention right away. This is God uh, almost taking command from Moses. But this was Moses' initiative. Um, and he says, the Lord, source of breath of all flesh, yifkod Hashem elokei haruchot bekol basar. So God, in this sort of respectful address of God, um, you shall appoint ish al ha'eda. Now we're not in democratic elections here, right? God appoints the leader, but Moses tells God to appoint the leader. This leader, verse 17, asher lifnehem, who goes out and comes in before them. Um, that's the same phrase that it's going to use to refer later to Moses was then old, lo vilavo. This same uh, verbiage is gonna be used like when Moses now is really going to reach the end of his leadership. But he's not there yet. He's still he's still strong enough um, to continue leading just as Washington could have. But he says, we need someone who will ensure continuity. I love this. Let the nation of God, the community of God not be like a sheep who has no shepherd. Let there not be a, a lack of leadership. So let's take care of this while I'm still here. And God then responds and says, okay, 
uh, I choose Joshua. Now, the fact that God chooses Joshua is not out of the blue. Joshua has been Moses' right-hand man. Um, he's been his Alexander Hamilton, except that Hamilton never became president. But um, uh, it was Joshua who was sitting at the foot of Mount Sinai waiting for Moses to come down. He wasn't part of the Synod of the Golden Calf. It was Joshua who was, who was faithful um, when the rest of the nation was sinning. And it was Joshua who during the battle of Amalek was holding up Moses' hands the entire time that the, the Moses' hands were raised to the sky and uh, uh, the, the, the nation would win and would feel confident. And then if Moses' hands got tired and dropped, then the nation started losing the battle. And so Yoshua on one side and Hur actually is the other one on the other side, they're holding up Moses' hands. They're literally supporting his leadership. Um, and that's another conversation that the the commentaries are like, what? Moses' hands didn't win the battle. God won the battle with the nation. So, you know, but it was their confidence because they saw Moses' confidence in them. Okay, but Joshua was always there. And now it's going to be official. Joshua is going to be appointed to take over. So in verse 18, Vayomer Hashem el Moshe, kach lecha et Yehoshua bin Nun. Um, God says to Moses, take Joshua, son of Nun, Oh, and by the way, of course, Joshua was one of the only faithful of the spies. Those 12 spies who scouted out the land, Joshua was one of the only two who said, no, the land is good. So Joshua's already made a name for himself. Asher Ruach Bo, he has the Ruach, he has the spirit in him. And now have an inauguration. Samachta et yadcha alav. Do the laying of the hands, which is um, a ritual a ritual of leadership transfer, um, very much like uh, we'll see today where, where a leader lays his hands on, on the Bible and swears uh, to take on the mantle of, of the responsibility of leadership. So in this, in this context, it's also about divine authority, higher authority. It's really interesting that um, the United States has kept this sort of religious, um, background alive uh the 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 bible is still you know a very important part of uh of the inauguration ceremony and i heard that biden is going to use a bible that's been in his family since the 1800s he's a religious man so anyway we 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 don't have the bible here we have one better we have god um appointing appointing joshua um so but but it's in front of everyone so there's a big gathering um and, and God is appointing Joshua, but Moses is transferring the leadership with the laying of the hands. Verse 19, So stand to him before the priest, the spiritual leadership, and in front of the whole community. And you shall command him or transfer leadership in front of their eyes. This needs to be public. Everyone needs to know and be assured that you have faith in your successor and that you are transferring, willfully transferring, transferring your leadership to him. And you're going to invest in him your hodcha, venatata hodcha. Hod is your glory, really. Here it's translated as your authority. Me hodcha, by the way, it's not your whole authority, but of your authority. Like no one's really ever gonna be George Washington, let's be honest, right? No one's gonna be Moses. The Torah ends by telling us, Lo kam Yisrael There was never another leader like Moses, but there was someone that Moses trusted enough to give from his glory to Joshua. And it was important that the nation see that so that they will obey Joshua. Um, and there's also this spiritual element that he also will stand, verse 21, before Elazar the priest and um, seek the decision of the Urim Bitumim. So that's the, the, the spiritual um, sort of oracle. The Urim is the place where they would, um, in the breastplate of the high priest, they would ask for guidance of God. So people would see um, the priest, the sort of uh, spiritual leader, the, the, the godly um, approval very clearly, and the political leader, or I wouldn't call Moses a political leader, but but the flesh and blood leader, right? Also um, offering leadership. And so verse 22, Moses did as God commanded, took Joshua before Eleazar the priest, before the whole community, laid his hands 
exactly as God had told him to, only because Moses asked him to. And yeah, thank you, Naomi. The, it's almost like being knighted. It's a, um, I, I think when you're saying that, you're thinking about the ritual and the, and maybe also the the ceremony, right? It's very ceremonial, much like our neighbors to the south are are doing today. So that was in, in the book of Bimidbar and we're fast forwarding now and scrolling down. We're fast forwarding to the end, end, end of the Torah. This is Parashat Vayelech, which begins Vayelech Moshe. So this is just a, a few chapters before the end. And so we already have had the ceremony. So people know there are no surprises who is going to take over when Moses dies. But Moses was not yet in his final days. And the book of Devarim takes about a year of time. So it's almost a year later. Moses has done a lot more teaching and speaking and almost like one long farewell sermon, the book of Devarim. And now he's finally ready to say goodbye, teaching them how to say goodbye. Um, and uh, again, this was all Moses' own initiative. This is, this is very much like Washington saying, I'm not running again. The nation has to move on and outlive me when I'm gone. And this is how I can ensure that. So Moses speaks these, th these words to the people of Israel. Uh, that's the introductory sentence here, verse one. By Yomar Alehem, he says to them, I'm 120 years old. I'm not so active anymore. I'm no spring chicken. But by the way, he says, Lo uchalod that's the verbiage I was mentioning before. I can't come and go anymore. But at the end of the Torah, what we'll see in a moment is it says he had never really lost his vigor. So he was still for, very capable at the age of 120. Um, but he also is feeling maybe a little bit more diminished. Okay, he's lived a long time. And moreover, it's time for the nation to go into the promised land and I will not be the one to take you there. I know that because God has said to me, Amar Eli, Lota Avor et Hayarden Hazev. Hashem Amar Eli, God already told me, you know, I'm not going to be crossing over the Jordan with you. And now there's a little bit of an interlude. God's going to bring you across. It's sort of moments of... Um, uh, inspiration, God's with you, but Joshua is the one who's going to take you there. Yehoshua hu over lefanecha ka'asher diber Hashem. Remember last year when we had that ceremony and God uh, gave the, the 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 leadership vote. <laughs> God's the only vote that counts, I guess, um, to Joshua. So now that vote has has occurred, but this is the now inauguration. This is the time where Joshua is going to take over. It's when I'm dying. And God, don't worry, God is going to help um, you and help Joshua conquer just as we conquered. Remember, we just conquered Sichon and Og, and uh, God will deliver the other nations to you as well um, when we get into the, when you get into the land without me. And he gives them these beautiful words of encouragement. Verse six, um, it, it comes up again and again, is the singular, but be strong and, and of, 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 well, resolute is the translation here. Um, yeah, be strong and, and fortified almost. Um, don't be afraid and don't be in dread of these other nations that you're going to encounter. Whatever challenges lay ahead, you're in good hands. Joshua is okay. And God's going to be by your side. Um, God is going to be really the authority here, or the 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 security, the protection, and and Joshua is going to be his God's representative. And then uh, another another sort of Le'enekol Yisrael moment, uh, verse seven. Moses brings Joshua together in the sight of all Israel and says again, Chazak ve'Emats, the same words. Um, you, Joshua. He says in front of everyone, you are going to bring this nation to this land that God promised, promised to their forefathers to give to them. You are going to divide this land then to these tribes and you're going to bring them the land. Um, it's the significance of having the previous leader present at the inauguration, which I don't have to tell you is not what's happening today south of us. 
Um, and that just shows, you know, this rocky transition um, and the lack of, uh, of faith that one leader has in the next, sadly. Um, but remember, God says, God is, uh, sorry, Moses says, God is the one who is also before you. God will be with you, will not forsake you, fear not. And by the way, we have a constitution that we are all living by. And so Moses wrote the Torah down. This is verse nine. It says here the teaching, capital T in the English, but in the Hebrew, it's HaTorah. Vayichtov Moshe et HaTorah Hazot. This teaching, this Torah, which might refer to just the most recent chunk of the book of Devarim, but might also refer to now the entire Torah is complete. And gives the Torah, Vayitzna el HaKohanim b'nei Levi hanosim et Aron Brit Hashem. He gives them to the priests and puts the Torah scroll in the ark. In that ark, which had contained the two tablets now now is a full torah scroll and uh and the the priests and the levites and the elders are keeping hold of it and not only that but they're going to always go back to this constitution right this this torah uh this written law and uh and and read it publicly every seven years when they get into the land of israel so this was something called hakel which means the gathering and every year at the the holiday of sukkot there would be a public reading of the of the law and there wasn't yet you know there were in synagogues yet and there wasn't yet torah reading every shabbat right that was instituted much later in the time of ezra they would read torah monday morning and thursday morning and then saturday morning every you know a full parsha but this was an annual public reading of the law reminding the nation of their blueprint as it were their guidelines um, and everyone would come to jerusalem uh, to hear the public reading of the law. Of course, they would also be there at the other two pilgrimage festivals, right? They would come together at Passover, they would come together at Shavuot. But interestingly, Sukkot was the one where there was this hakel, this reading of the, of the Torah. Um, and to read this teaching in front of everyone. So it's, again, Moses um, imbuing authority to the text, not only to the leader, but to the text. Um, and everyone, their men, women, children, everyone should should live by this law. And then God says, okay, Moses, the time is drawing for you to die. Uh, verse 14, Yudalet, el It's time to say goodbye. Stand there together in front of the tent of meeting, in front of the White House, so to speak, um, in front of the source of power. And um, they stand together side by side. And God's presence, of course, is there in the pillar, pillar of cloud, representing God's approval, representing God's presence still within the nation. And finally, so we saw the, the laying of the hands then we saw the goodbye, the public goodbye. And now we have the death of Moses. And this is the, almost the voice of the narrator, right? Moses is now de dead. He's just been up the mountain. And it says, um, Moshe, Eved Hashem. There, Moses, the servant, the servant of God died. And here it starts verse seven, Moses was 120 years old when he died. This is what I was referring to before. His eyes were undimmed, his vigor unabated. And the people mourned him. By the way, there's a great debate in the Talmud. Like, who wrote these words if Moses, if Moses was dead? Who wrote the last? It's the last eight verses of the Torah, by the way, from the, the time where it says, and Moses died. And one opinion is that Joshua wrote those last eight verses. Um, that, that those were maybe God dictated to Joshua and Joshua wrote. Um, but the other opinion is that Moses himself had been dictated these um, verses before he died and that he wrote them in tears. It's interesting. Um, but they mourn, you know, the fact that they mourn Moses. And the very next verse is, and Joshua ben Nun, Yehoshua ben Nun, verse nine, male ruach chokma was filled with that spirit, that spirit of wisdom. And remember, because we had the leadership of Moses 
the confidence of Moses behind him. And therefore, and they continued to trust him, to heed him, and to do as God had commanded to Moses. So let's take a pause. I have another little surprise I want to show you, actually. One more version of the song. But let's take a few minutes and just reflect on some of the thematics. Um, what it means to be a strong leader. What it means to, to teach them how to say goodbye while you still can. Um, any thoughts, you're welcome to put it in the chat, but you're also now welcome to raise your hand or um, or unmute yourself. I see David has something to say. Go ahead. Well, being very, very old, I remember <laughs> when, when shows, musical shows, the music had the same power as the words. Now here, the music is serving the words, and it, to me, the music is quite indifferent. You don't come out of it humming a song or a melody. The music's gone, and it's such a shame. Do you mean the music of Hamilton to you doesn't fit Hamilton, with the, yeah. Yeah. the gravity of the scene? Ah, oh, that's so interesting. I mean, you can you compare that to because it's, know, My Fair Lady or well, South right. Pacific. The music is fabulous. Here, the music so is- So there was a very deliberate choice on the part of the writers of Hamilton to take hip hop and R&B and gospel and all these very, very new, very modern, um, almost jarring is, I think is what you're saying, kinds of genres of music and to take old, an old story um, and yeah. do a mashup. And so for you, I will just say for you, it doesn't resonate. Um, for me personally, it does. I and I hum this it's been in my ear all week but maybe also because I know the I know the musical very well and I've listened to it on repeat so many times I wonder if if so it, it might be just also whether one has a connection to that kind of music or not I guess I'm trying to say it's a matter of taste but you're saying something more uh, objective sounding which is fine it's it's a matter I'm of say it's subjective it's a matter of the waiting W E I G H. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The music yeah. is so secondary. The music serves the words. I mean, I'm not against that, but it's just such a shame that all the melodies have gone. <laughs> Does anyone have another comment about the way the music and the, or how it struck you? If anyone's not heard Hamilton before or has, Gloria, I see you waving. What do you want to say? I want to support David in his comment. I'm also old. I don't. But but I but I think what he's saying. I also, feel bad saying that, but anyway, no 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 yeah, go ahead. no no. But I think <laughs> I think David, uh, where I agree with you is, it, the music by itself is not standalone. Rachel, you say you can hum this tune in your head, but the truth is, any of the rap stuff and beat music, if you take away the lyrics, it's not going to have it's going to have pulse, but it's not going to have meaning. And in the old Broadway style, I understand the what you're music, saying. The music is a standalone melody. In this case, it, as David said uh, eloquently, it serves the context, but it's a, not a standalone musical piece. Okay. Do others feel that way? Lona? Um, I see Gloria is nodding, the other Gloria, oh. yes. Lona, um, so she was just nodding in agreement. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I happened to watch uh, several times um, on YouTube. There's a rendition of Lin Manuel Miranda and the original cast who go to the White House the second week of January. We're going to watch that next. Oh. That's what I want to show you. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah, if you yeah. look at, you need Kleenex for that because it, it's mm. so real. Um, and mm. today, just listening to you go through that, what God tells Moses and Moses tells the people, and it, it, see, it had such an impact on me. I mean, I know the story, you know, I know what the Torah says, but today and my husband and joe was watching 
I could hear downstairs. I can hear the TV going, and um, the the whole, it was like, what you chose today was absolutely fantastic. Well, I mean, this is like living in an ideal, right? Halavai, every president should be George Washington, <laughs> and and elegant and elegant with elegance and dignity, you know, teach them how to say goodbye. But yeah, the the. The juxtaposition is very jarring to what's actually been happening. Um, so I, I want to play that. That's what I want to play for all of you right now, um, because we we did have a president, regardless of how you felt about his policies, but we did have a president four years ago who was very troubled with who was elected, but brought in this song into the White House. This this time four years ago, it was January tenth, twenty seventeen. And, um, or at least that's the date on the YouTube video that I found and, um, and brought this song and said, we have, to, we have to say goodbye. It's time to say goodbye, that's democracy. Um, I just wanna say, because I feel so, you know, I guess I feel protective of this song um, and because I love it so much. I feel it, like I feel, you know, I wanna talk about neutrality. I wanna warn against partisan fighting, pick up a pen, start writing. Like, I, I feel those tunes, um, you know, I, I wanna talk about what I have learned, the hard won wisdom I have earned. Okay, just hum the music and don't say the words. Yeah, I understand what you're saying that the, the, the so, so this is a spoken word. So what hip hop is, is a spoken word or a poetic word mishmash with, with background. Spoken. So yes, you're saying the music doesn't stand separate That's from the lyrics. And yeah, I hear, I'll, I'll grant you that. As long as we mean no disrespect to Hamilton the musical or the genre of hip hop, which by the way has taken hold of so much of our, our, our culture. Even if I don't, I don't, by the way, I don't listen to hip hop and I can't stand rap, but there's, an, but there's amazing art. And, and in Hamilton, by the way, it's not this song, but one of the other songs, it's like the fastest rap, it's like sets the record for the fastest words ever delivered on a Broadway stage or something like that. Like it's their skill there as well. Um, it's when, okay, I'm gonna show it off if I can remember it, but it's the David Diggs who, who, plays, um, who plays Lafayette in act one and uh, trying to convince, um, uh, Washington to allow Hamilton uh, to to command a, a a troop, and he says, you know, you need you need you need Hamilton, and he goes, uh, Lord, he knows what to do in a trench, uh, ingenuity of blue in French. I mean, like he goes like that, like, what's he gonna do on the bench? You're gonna have to use him eventually. Like it's amazing, it's amazing how they just, I I when I'm listening to it, I could do the whole thing, but not today, not today. All right, so um, any last thoughts, comments before we do one, one more listen, one last time. We're gonna do that listen and watch uh, the Obama. It's actually very interesting, Lona, to watch that video because you see, of course, in the front row, there's um, Barack and Michelle Obama and the Bidens who are saying goodbye to the White House. And who to thunk, maybe he thunk, I don't know, but it, it's, it's interesting to see him saying goodbye as he's coming back in. Um, he was pretty emotional. He you could see that it really touched. And you could see, and you could see it in the room, by the way. And, and it was, of course, a room of Obama supporters, and they were very scared of what it meant to have a, a, a Trump presidency, and what it meant to say goodbye to their beloved leader, and whether their country was going to be okay. So you see tears in the room um, towards the end, more towards the end of the song there, um, and 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 yet, right? There's a succession. Of, of leadership. So um, I'm going to show that now. And then I want to make sure we log off before. Oh, Florence, you want to say something? We have time. That's okay. But I want to make sure we log off before the swearing in happens. So everyone who wants to can watch it. Go ahead, Florence. Just a, a little note. Uh, I have my TV on and Jennifer Lopez just sang appropriate to what we're discussing. This land is made for you and me. How appropriate. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, they're getting all these celebrities. And I think, uh, 
uh, Lady Gaga was going to sing. Lady Gaga the was no slouch. But, she just. Yeah, sang. I missed it. Uh, <laughs> right, I'm sure. But this, for, for, for our Parsha here, you know, this land, he's leaving the land. And yes, exactly. Exactly. It's the real lights. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That thank you. I I didn't realize that's the connection you were making to the land, the land of Israel, and that's exactly what Moses is telling them. Even though it's not going to be his land, but it's his land. It's his right. land. It's my land. It's your land. Yes, thank you. And uh, yeah. thank you, Naomi, for the comments in the chat. It is about a little bit of abstract art, or maybe it's the rhythm, right? That that is telling the story. It's supporting the story. All right. So let's watch this. A bit of a, I guess a. A bomb for what for what transfer of power could look like or once did look like and maybe hopefully will look like again without requiring an insurrection of the nation's capital. So here we go. I'm just gonna make sure I get the right. Okay. So again, this is four years ago this week. And it's the cast of Hamilton singing for the Obama White House uh, the week before the inauguration. See me. I know you're busy. What do you need, sir? Sir? I want to give you a word of warning. Sir, I don't know what you heard, but whatever it is, Jefferson started it. Thomas Jefferson resigned this morning. You're kidding. I need a favor. Whatever you say, sir. Jefferson will pay for his behavior. Talk less. I'll use the press. I'll write under a pseudonym. You'll see what I can do to him. I need you to draft an address. Yes, he resigned. You can finally speak your mind. No. He's stepping down so he can run for president. <laughs> Good luck defeating you, sir. I'm stepping down. I'm not running for president. I'm sorry, what? One last time, relax, have a drink with me. One last time, let's take a break tonight, and then we'll teach them how to say goodbye, to say goodbye, you and I. No, sir, why? I want to talk about neutrality, sir, with Britain and France on the verge of war. Is this the best I time? want to warn against partisan fighting. But pick up a pen, start writing. I want to talk about what I have learned, the hard-won wisdom I have earned. As far as the people are concerned, you have to serve. You could continue to serve. No. One last time, the people will hear from me. One last time And if we get this right We're gonna teach them how to say goodbye You and I Mr. President, they will say you're weak no. They will see you are strong Your position is so unique So I'll use it to move them along Why do you have to say goodbye? If I say goodbye, the nation learns to move on. It outlives me when I'm gone. Like the scripture says, everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. They'll be safe in the nation we've made. I want to sit under my own moment alone in the shade at home in this nation we've made one last time one last time so in reviewing the incidents of my administration I am unconscious of intentional error I am nevertheless too sensible of my defects, not to think it probable that I may have committed many errors. I shall also carry with me the hope that my country will view them with indulgence. That after 45, 45 years, years of my life dedicated to its service with an upright zeal, the faults of incompetent abilities will be consigned to oblivion, as I myself must soon be. 
the mansions of rest. I anticipate with pleasing expectation that retreat in which I promise myself to realize the sweet enjoyment of partaking in the midst of my fellow citizens. The benign influence of good laws under a free government, the ever favorite object of my heart. Happy reward is I trust of unusual cares, labors, and dangers. There's a little bit of a thank you at the end. We'll just watch another few seconds. That's men. Yeah. And uh, what an incredible gift these folks have given to the United States of America. It is rare where uh, a piece of art uh, can remind us about what's best in ourselves. And that's what these guys have done. Yeah. And that is a great gift. So with that, let me know how to say goodbye. Thank you so much, everybody. So there you have it. Amazing, amazing.